And we're happy to welcome the governor of Illinois, Pat Quinn, to our studios today. Nice to have you there. I'm glad to be here. You do know you're the second most famous Pat Quinn in the country right now, right? Yeah, I followed Pat Quinn when I was in college. He was, uh, I guess he played for the Leafs first. He didn't sure he? did. And then he yeah. was the coach, and I've never met him, but uh, he's got a good name. You've never met him? I've never met oh, him. we got to make that happen. Yeah, well, we have to do it. I uh, <laughs> thought he had a good coaching career, and, uh, you know, I'm a Blackhawks fan, of course. And, Nobody's uh, perfect, Governor. Let's move on. Well, <laughs> wait a minute. We won the Stanley Cup in I know. Don't remind me. When's the last time Toronto won? I'm just uh, like, as I say, moving <laughs> right along here, I, I, I want for our viewers who don't know much about your background to put your governorship into some perspective here, because you took over from your predecessor, Rod Blagojevich, mm -hmm. who was impeached and removed from office. Mm -hmm. and we know the story about all of that, trying to sell mm -hmm. Barack Obama's Senate seat. How much did all of that shape what you were able to do in your first administration? Well, I assumed office. I was lieutenant governor, and uh, it was an ethics crisis, obviously. Not only was Rod Blagojevich in trouble, but his predecessor, George Ryan, a former governor, was in jail. So we've got one governor in jail and another one going to jail uh, in Illinois. And obviously, integrity is number one, and my job was to restore integrity to the governor's office and really to our government. We've pass strong ethics laws and we enforce them and that's the only way to go. I think you've had four governors actually spend time in jail, not to mention mm -hmm. Congressman Dan Rostenkowski and we can talk about the ethics of uh, Daley the father and his mayoralty administration. What, what is it about uh, Illinois politics that seems to be um, odd? Well, I've been an outsider. Uh, I get elected by everyday people because they know I'm a, a reformer and somebody who believes in strong ethical standards and integrity and obviously our state uh, needed that when I got sworn in and then I got elected in uh, November of two 2010 and uh, I believe in no-nonsense approach to uh, government uh, we have to we've cut our budget we're right now our fiscal year coming up we're going to spend less on operations than we did in 08 2008 but we also believe in making sure that taxpayers come first and Families and businesses get a fair shake, and that's the only way to go. You've raised taxes a lot to help balance yeah, that budget. Well, I inherited a huge deficit. The uh, guy before me had left me with a $10 billion deficit, and we've had to try and whittle it down. But we also believe in maintaining our education. Uh, this year, we were investing more money, I hope, in our early childhood education and scholarships for deserving students to go to college. Uh, jobs follow brain power. I believe that. I think that's the key for... Canada and the United States to make sure we have well-skilled, highly educated workers, not only college. I believe in uh, diplomas where that's important, but also community college. I used to teach community college at night, and I understand how important it is to get an associate degree, and, and sometimes it's a career certificate. Uh, you want to be a welder? We want to teach you how to be a welder, and uh, that's a good job too. So everybody in and nobody left out. We should just nail down that previous issue we were talking about. Do you plan to run again? Of course, you know, I, I think I'm doing a good job. Uh, you know, when you clean up the government and then also our economy is really definitely revving up. Uh, we had a very good report last Friday, lower unemployment, more jobs created. Uh, our state exported 30% increase last year. And we're very grateful to Canada and the province of Ontario. Uh, they're great customers and we have a good relationship back and forth. We're going to talk more about that in a bit. Other thing to tidy up. You do plan to stay out of jail too, don't you? I have no intention of go going to jail. I think if you do things right and follow your conscience, that's the best way to go. That was a bit of a facetious question. I, I hope so. Just let you know. yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Illinois, of course, is not only the land of Lincoln, but it's also the land of Obama. And I wonder whether, does it matter when the president comes from your state? Oh, of course, yeah. Uh, president Obama was a state senator in our state legislature, and then he ran for U.S. Senate and got elected. I supported him in that election, and I supported him when he ran for president. And just last Monday, a week ago, I was uh, in the White House uh, with the president, and he had a town meeting with all the governors of America. But beyond and, the, you know, he's our favorite son, and therefore yeah. the psychic gratification of that, is there any advantage to having the president being from Illinois? I think when people hear about Illinois, they know more about our state because of President Obama. He uh, chose Illinois to live, and... Uh, it helps, uh, I think, people and biz businesses understand that Illinois is a great place to live and do business. Let's acknowledge off the top here, you're a Democrat, but I'm sure you're watching the Republican presidential nomination race mm -hmm. with interest. Um, train wreck. Would yeah. you, train yeah. wreck, eh? Yeah. Would you help us understand it a little better? Well, I, you know, I think some of the Republican candidates act like ignorance is bliss, uh, that facts aren't important. And uh, we'll see on November 6th of this year, uh, 
whoever emerges from their primary will face our president. And I know Barack Obama very well, and I think he will uh, uh, appeal to the best of America, uh, appeal to the future, uh, winning the future. Uh, I think he will speak about his record of uh, 23 straight months of job creation after inheriting a terrible recession. And I don't think the other side has uh, much of an argument at all. See, I would have thought you would have had more in common with the other side. When's your Me? birthday? <laughs> December 16th, 1948. What, what, when's your son's birthday? Uh, December 16th, 1948, my um, youngest son. Your youngest son. Um, what happened on that date in history? It's the 175th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party, See, the real Tea Party. I, okay? I would have thought yeah. that you and the Tea Party would have had more in common because Well, actually, of that. I organized a campaign one time in Illinois. The governor at the time uh, in the legislature kind of uh, colluded to raise their own pay. And we uh, sent 40,000 tea bags by mail to the governor. And he and reenacted the Boston Tea Party, which happened on the birth, my de day of birth. <laughs> and then, uh, what, 36 uh, years later, my youngest son was born. But and, you're uh, not a Tea Party follower. Well, not the, not that not the crowd now. I don't think yeah. they're following the original origins of the Boston Tea Party. Uh, the whole idea of grassroots democracy and participatory democracy is where I'm coming from. And, We've done a lot of petition drives. We've set up consumer groups, and we don't glorify uh, powerful insiders just because they're on the inside. We want to uh, strengthen the voters and strengthen the consumers of our state and the workers. That's where I'm coming from. You met during your visit with Dalton James Patrick McGinty, Jr., another good Irish Catholic politician. Fine broth of a lad. Fine yeah. broth of a lad, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was on the top of your list of things to discuss? Uh, well, I invited him to the governor's mansion in uh, Springfield, Illinois. Mm -hmm. That's where I live, and uh, we have lots of uh, stuff about Abraham Lincoln there, including a Lincoln bed that he purchased himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, the premier is a very big fan of Abraham Lincoln, and uh, I am too. And uh, I think coming to Illinois, visiting Illinois, is something that every Canadian should put on their list uh, right away. <laughs> okay. It's a great place. Besides trying to get some <laughs> tourist dollars out of him, uh, what do you guys talk about? Uh, we have a lot in common. We believe in a green way of thinking and a green way of acting. Uh, the whole concept of renewable energy, energy from the sun, the wind, from geothermal, very important. We also believe in energy efficiency. Uh, you know, we want to make our uh, society uh, secure from uh, reliance on uh, foreign potentates who have uh, energy, you know, whether it's oil or, or other natural resources, uh, as much as independence as we can make. And I think that's why Canada and the United States are really great partners and friends, because we work together for a world that's uh, free from uh, discord. Ontario and Illinois, of course, both on a great lake. Yes, we uh, are. Do you have some sort of shared ideas about issues mm -hmm. around the Great Lakes? Well, you know, Mark Twain came from near Illinois. He was from Missouri, and uh, he once said about water that whiskey's for drinking and water's worth fighting for. <laughs> and I was the chairman of the uh, Great Lakes Commission, which consists of Ontario and Quebec, two provinces, and eight American states, including Illinois. And we have a, we're trying to get a clean water initiative right now through our legislature, because investing in water, very, very important. Uh, the future of our world relies on food and water. We have to have clean water, and that's something that Premier McGinty is very strong for. And, you know, we're all blessed by living near the Great Lakes, whether it's Lake Ontario or Lake Michigan where we live, and uh, there's uh, things we can do together on that. Ontario and Illinois have both had manufacturing sectors that have been mm -hmm. hit very hard uh, through the course of the Great Recession. Not Gosh. lately. We have 20,000 new manufacturing jobs well, in Illinois. Ours are, ours are up a little bit, too, yeah. but we, I think we lost... Uh, couple of hundred thousand before that happened. Well, we had a fine Canadian, Italian Canadian, I guess, uh, Sergio Marchioni, who was a CEO of Chrysler. Right. He came down to Belvedere, Illinois. When I became governor, uh, I, they had 200 jobs at that uh, plant, a giant plant, only a couple hundred jobs. This summer, 4,200 jobs. So we want to work with uh, our auto manufacturers. We have Ford and Mitsubishi in our state besides Chrysler. And I think the auto industry in Canada and the United States, especially in our state of Illinois, in the Midwest, we can go very far if we work together. I'm sure Premier McGinty reminded you, though, that no one makes more cars in North America than the province of Ontario. Yes, he did. He told me that. Thought yeah. he might say that. One hand across the border. You know, we believe in uh, working together. If we, we have a very good auto supply network in the Great Lakes region, and we should not forget that that's a key part 
of our economy. And if we uh, continue to make and manufacture uh, good vehicles, energy efficient vehicles, this new uh, Dodge Dart that's going to be made in Illinois, 40 miles to the gallon, 10 airbags. Uh, you ought to get one of those. Yeah, think it over. <laughs> uh, okay, you're selling. Maybe with That's my job. Sell, baby, yeah, sell, right? I'm the okay. uh, uh, marketer in chief for <laughs> Illinois and the exporter in chief. We were just at this food service uh, gathering here. They have a convention here. We brought 10 Illinois businesses up, family owned businesses. Uh, we want to connect to people and uh, work together. Tell me this, because I'm not sure Premier McGinty would have told you this. Uh, we have, you know, a good commitment to renewables here in the province, yeah. a Green Energy Act. He wants this place to be the, the leading jurisdiction in North America for green energy. Mm -hmm. But it's been a controversial policy because yeah. they've paid very high subsidies to sort of create this business from the uh -huh. ground up. Do you do that too in Illinois? We have some subsidies. Uh, we also have a big public works uh, program of uh, investing in roads and bridges and uh, clean water and railroads and uh, including uh, uh, energy issues that uh, make us more sustainable. Uh, but it's a balanced program. I don't think we have as robust as you have in Ontario. Although I told the Premier we're very big on electric vehicles and we've used some of our money for charging stations. 280 mm -hmm. charging stations in the metro Chicago area. You're at Walgreens parking lots, all that kind of thing. And uh, we want to uh, have more electric vehicles. It's a very good niche. Our government is buying some, and that's maybe something we can work with Ontario on. I think I think power, though, in Ontario these days costs three, four, five cents a kilowatt hour, and our province has been paying some, you know, mm -hmm. solar and other renewable people yeah. forty up to eighty cents a kilowatt hour to get that industry going. Yeah. Do you do that? No, we don't do that. I think uh, you know there are different approaches to getting to the to heaven, mm -hmm. and uh, we really big in energy efficiency. We have more wind turbines than any other state in the union, 404, mm -hmm. including quite a few in Ronald Reagan's home county. I wonder what he would think today about seeing all these uh, towers and wind turbines. But uh, that's something I think we share in common. Uh, we work with our wind developers. We would like to see long-term contracts because it helps them get investment to build more wind turbines. We have great transmission and that helps our electricity. And just finally, let's finish up where we started. Did you ever play hockey? No. I, well, I did play hockey. They made me a goalie. I wasn't very, I was not oh. a bad passer, but I wasn't a great ice skater. But I am a big Blackhawks fan and I was on the ice after the uh, sixth game of the uh, winning Stanley Cup. We hope to do it again. And uh, also the Bears are going to win next year. That's a football team. The Bulls, of course, were ready for the title. And the White Sox will play the Cubs in the World Series. They'll win in the uh, seventh game. Oh, so the rest of us will just go home and leave it all to you guys. It's all about Chicago and Illinois. Boy, talk about windy. Yeah. Ah, sorry, <laughs> couldn't resist. Okay. Governor Quinn, it's good of you to visit us here at TVO tonight. Uh, thanks, thanks for so the opportunity. Much. Enjoy visiting. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.